guys i'm back and i'm k and i like to chill and watch tv and today i'm back with a review of episode 13 of yashihime this episode was called the delicious feudal monks so to start off with to me this was a really good episode as far as getting some information trying to put pieces together and to me this episode is where a lot of theories can really start coming from because we did you know get to see two more of our original game so this episode starts out with totetsu who is the last of the four perils that we are coming into contact with um if i'm keeping track correctly i think we've defeated two out of the four um with two still lingering around because they escaped now totetsu's thing is he likes to eat virtuous monks he thinks they are tasty and this leads us into where moroku has been this entire time so at first we see the discussion between the demon slayers uh kohaku setsuna toa and hisui who is moroku's son and hisui is not very interested in trying to go protect his father because he says that he doesn't consider him virtuous now I thought he was saying this because of how we saw Moroku act in the original Inuyasha series. Uh, he was basically described as a lecherous monk. So I was hoping that, you know, after him and Sango had had kids and decided to be together, that that was not what he continued to do. Um, so I was very happy when I got the explanation as far as Moroku's son actually feels like his dad is a coward because he ran away from a battle and decided to call it training. This is also where we found out that Moroku has been away doing a thousand day training and it seems like by the time that we are reaching him in this episode, he ha already has two years in. This was also something I found interesting because at the end of the original series, of course, um, after defeating Naraku, um, Moroku's wind tunnel goes away. And he says that he's continued to try and fight demons and there was a battle that made him realize kind of without the wind tunnel, he might be a little weak. So he decided to do this thousand day training to reach a level of enlightenment and get some sort of divine power. The catch is he doesn't know what power he will receive if he even receives one at all. That's a little crazy to me. Um, but then again, it's Moroku. So I know it has to be done from a good place. Um, and that he would use it for nothing less than to protect his family and the people that he cares about. So to me, it made sense. Now, when the twins arrive, it appears that Moroku recognizes both of them off gate, like immediately takes a look at them. And it seems like he's a little surprised that Setsuna decided to become a demon slayer. Now, at first, Setsuna doesn't recognize Moroku at all um and he seems pretty okay with that he says if you've forgotten then that must just be the way that fate wants it to play out now once totesu arrives and the battle starts and we're doing all of this setsuna realizes that she remembers moroku and she goes to him to have him release some powers of hers and this is where stuff started getting really interesting to me so he releases her powers and it seems like once he did that she went full demon like we see the marks and everything and she looked just like Sashomaru now I remember in the original series that when that would happen to Inuyasha it was when his life was in danger the blood within him would just take over he'd become full demon to save his own life but in this case the powers have been locked away by Moroku and he can release them but that just leads to more questions because at the end we see Setsuna tell Toa that we have the same blood so that if this affects me it affects you so did Moroku bind both their powers like when they were born or is this something that happened between him and Setsuna after Toa had already been dragged through the tree 
So hers haven't yet been sealed up because we never really got into that. We also saw Sango at the end of this episode. That made me feel good. But I have a few lingering questions that may or may not be important. But a couple things that I noticed is one, we only saw one of Moroku and Sango's twins. Uh, the one we saw, Gyokutu, I think. I'm sorry if I'm just absolutely butchering these names, but I'm trying. Um, but we only saw one of the twins and we didn't see the other one. So I'm curious if something happened to the other twin or if she's missing or what happened with that. Also, Moroku didn't seem worried about the twins he more so seemed a little curious it seemed like he wondered how Setsuna ended up as a demon slayer what Toa had been up to but if I'm remembering the episode correctly he didn't ask about Moroha he didn't really seem concerned which makes me think he knows where Inuyasha and Kagome may be or new thought is he completing the thousand day training in hopes of gaining a divine power to help Inuyasha and Kagome and maybe fix the fact that their kids have no memories of them I don't know I don't know overall like I said very good episode with a lot of information this is an episode that can start allowing us to form a lot of different theories about what's going on and when you start putting things together that we've seen up until now it's starting to have everything kind of fall into place so I feel like before the end of the series we'll get another glimpse of Sashomaru and possibly Aviyasha and Kagome just to give us a little bit more information but overall pretty good um I'm starting to get used to the fact that you know we're gonna get some battles with the girls let them figure out some more things about themselves before we continue to get more information on where the old gang may be because if they gave it to us all at once and immediately just resolve the parent issue how many of us original Inuyasha watchers would have continued the series beyond that if it was just okay now they got their parents back and they're going to continue on their journey how many of us would have stuck around so I get it I get it and I'm starting to you know get used to the way that they're doing it do I love it no but I it makes sense really interested to see how the series will end if we'll get a season two what will happen how far will we take any of this and what more what other characters are we gonna still be introduced to because we still haven't seen Shippo have no idea what happened to him so you know still here for it would like to see if Shippo grew up had some kids and did some things and everything but yeah I guess that's all I got for this episode if you guys have any theories please 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 drop them below because I am very interested to know what you guys think is going to happen or how this will all play out what stories do you think will be introduced in the next coming episodes I love it all also, if you have any new animes that you think I might enjoy, also drop those below and I'll feel free to check those out. But if you like my videos, feel free to like and subscribe and check me out. And I'll be back with more videos of me watching more things and talking about them. So I will see you guys later. Bye.